Welcome to Tinkercad. Today we're going to make a jack-o'-lantern tea candle cover for a little LED tea candle. It's going to be awesome. So when you open up a new Tinker um, page, you and you have your work plane. They set up your work plane for you. And the first thing I want you to do, they give them these really funny names, which are hysterical. However, when you're de when you're a teacher and you're dealing with 15 of them or 20 of them at a time. Um, having really funny names is not super helpful because I have no idea whose is whose. So please name your file with your last name and a description. So I'm going to make a pumpkin. This tutorial is about Lake and a, a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. So that's going to be the name of my, um, my file. The second thing I want you to do is set up your work plane. Go down here to edit grid. This is going to be our workspace measurements. If I wanted to change it to inches, I could do it here. Today, I'm going to stick with millimeters. Um, and then our, we print on, in our library, the Ultimakers. So go to Ultimaker 3, and that sets up your work plane. Your work plane is basically the printing plate in the 3D printer. So that's how much space we have to work with. So little tour of the space. We have the work plane here. Um, and then over on the side, if you have a mouse with a scroll button, that's going to make your life so much easier. I highly recommend that. If not, to be able to work, move around in the work plane, you have this um, rotating box over here. So you can, you can click on it and go from one side to the other, or you can click and drag it around. Uh, and then you have your zoom in, your zoom out and um, looking at it from a perspective or a flat view. So here is our work plane. If you right click on your mouse, it also lets you rotate around or you can use your scroll button to zoom in and out. So over here on the right, we have all of our shapes. If you click on this um, menu here, it gives you a whole bunch of different shapes you can choose from. To start, we're just going to use our basic shapes. So let's get started. I want you to grab the sphere and drag it onto your work plane. Now, in order to fit our tea candle, we need to um, make it a specific, we need to make it bigger. So I'm going to click on one of the corner handles and double click in the number. And I'm actually going to start out by making this 70 by 30 and then if I look at the top handle here, I can click on that. and I'm going to make it 65 tall. So I end up with 75, 30, 65 tall. I end up with this oblong shape. Now, the reason I have the oblong shape instead of a sphere is because you know how pumpkins have the lobes around them? Well, we want to make it have that sim that um, the bumpy quality that a pumpkin would have, the ridges on the sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my ellipse here, <laughs> my, uh, my, my sphere, and uh, I'm going to click Control D or Command D on a Mac. That's a duplicate. And then see this little rotation arrow? I'm going to click that one click. Okay, and it's going to automatically rotate for me. And then if I hit Command D again, it's automatically going to rotate those around for me. So I hit Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D, and I end up with a sphere with the lobes. So there is the beginning of our pumpkin. Now, I don't want these to move, so I'm going to select all of them. And I'm going to come up here to Group <clears throat> up at the top. Select Group. You can also do Control or Command G. When it's red, that means it's thinking, and now it's blue, and it is a shape. I can change the color of my pumpkin. I'm going to make it orange just so that it looks like a pumpkin, but it's not. it'll only print in whatever color filament your printer has. So I always remind my students of that, just that the color that they make it on the screen isn't necessarily the color it's going to print. It's going to print whatever color plastic is in the printer. So there we go. So there's the beginning of our pumpkin. So I'm going to kind of move that over to the side. And the next thing I want to do is make a hole for, that's the same size as my tea candle. So I'm going to grab the cylinder, this um, 
gray stripey cylinder over here. When it's gray and stripey, that means it's a hole. That means you're gonna cut a hole out of the shape. So I'm gonna grab this cylinder. And again, I'm gonna click on the little handle and I'm gonna make it 40 by 40 and then 50 tall. So that is gonna be the size of our candle. That, that will fit, that's a hole that will fit our little candle. So I wanna keep that in mind. I'm gonna set it over here to the side just so that um, I, once I get my pumpkin shape set, I'm gonna put that inside to make sure that um, there's room for my candle to fit in my pumpkin. So now I'm gonna take my pumpkin and I wanna carve out my pumpkin, right? Just like you would with an actual pumpkin. So I'm gonna Command D or Control D and duplicate and get a second pumpkin. The, I did a test print and it printed okay with three millimeter walls. The walls are super thin, uh, but I think that that's gonna look really cool with a candle inside of it. So what I wanna do is shrink my sphere by three millimeters on each side. So that's gonna be six millimeters total, right? So I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna subtract six millimeters. So it's gonna be 69 and it's gonna be 69. And then I want it to stay lined up at the base. So that my, my hole is for my candles actually gonna be at the base of my pumpkin. So I only need to shrink it by three millimeters at the top. So I can go 62 here. Okay, so that's going to be the inside of our pumpkin. See, I was just a little bit smaller. I'm going to click my hole, and I'm going to make that uh, to carve out the middle of the pumpkin. Now, I'm going to fit it inside the pumpkin, but it's really hard to know when it's lined up, right? So what I'm going to do is click and select both my hole and my pumpkin shape, and I'm going to align them. So up here on the toolbar, right here, a line. You can also just hit the L key. If I click a line, it's gonna give me this grid and I can choose how to align them. Now I wanna center them with each other. So I'm gonna click the center on the left and the center on the right. And that way they are lined up. I want them aligned at the bottom so that my hole, you can see the little gray spot right there so that my hole is at the bottom of my pumpkin, okay? So I'm gonna select both of them again and I'm gonna group them. And again, it's red as it's thinking. So we're gonna give it a second to think and it's gonna carve out the middle. So you can see the little tiny hole right there is the middle of our pumpkin, okay? So this is now is where our tea candle hole comes in. So we're gonna take our pumpkin and fit it over top of our tea candle, the hole for our tea candle. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with aligning. I'm gonna use my align and I'm gonna align it on the right and the left. And then at the bottom, so they're lined up at the bottom and then I'm gonna group them together and it's gonna cut a hole the size of my tea candle out of my pumpkin. So there we go. You can now see the inside of the pumpkin. It's all carved out. All the ridges lined up because we aligned it. Looks great. One issue that we're gonna find though is see how it's now kind of floating up in space. The 3D printer is gonna have a really hard time figuring out what to do with that blank space. So what I wanna do is make the pumpkin sit on the work plane. So I'm gonna click the pumpkin and I'm gonna hit the letter D. No command, no control, just the letter D that stands for drop. And it's gonna set the pumpkin right on the work plane for me. All right, so there we go. There's our pumpkin looking good. So now we get to do the fun part. The fun part is the shapes for our pumpkin's face. So I'm gonna start, I'm a traditionalist. I'm gonna go for a triangle nose. So I'm gonna grab my roof shape here, my triangle shape and get it roughly the shape I want it to be kind of want it tall and skinny. You can turn it upside down if you want to, but I like it straight up. I'm gonna make it a hole up here where the colors are. Okay, and then I'm gonna put it over in, dig it into my pumpkin. Now, one problem we have is it's stuck on the work plane and that's where this black arrow comes in. And it looks like I need to move it out a little bit more. 
it doesn't matter how long it is because you're, pump, you're gonna be poking your hole in your pumpkin. That looks pretty good. And it goes through the wall of my pumpkin, which looks great. I'm gonna make it a little higher just so I have plenty of room for a big smiley mouth because my pumpkins are happy. I'm gonna select all of them. I'm gonna group it and it's gonna cut a hole into my pumpkin for me for the nose. And we just are patient while the red goes away. There we go. Now you can see into the pumpkin. There's my pumpkin's nose ready to go. Let's do the mouth next. I'm gonna grab the rounded roof because I want a smiley face. And I'm actually gonna grab two rounded roofs, okay? Because I wanna make like a watermelon rind shape, right? So one of my roofs is gonna be the hole. And then the other one we need to make a little bit bigger. So let's say if this one is 20 wide by 10 tall, let's make this one 30 wide so that it's an extra five on each side and we'll make 15 tall. So it's an extra five on the bottom there. And again, I'm gonna use my cool align tool. I'm gonna to select both of these. I'm gonna click align and I'm gonna align them in the middle. It doesn't so much matter if you align them back and forth. And I'm gonna select group them both, select them both and I'm gonna group them and oops, I have a problem. My hole was smaller, less um, long than my shape. So I'm gonna undo Command or Control Z. And I'm gonna move my shape a little bit. And I'm gonna make my hole longer than my shape. Uh-oh. 40 and 20, there we go. And now I'm gonna align them again. So I'm gonna click both, I'm gonna align them. I'm just gonna align them in the middle. Now they should be all set. I'm gonna group them and it's gonna cut my little hole for me. There's my smiley face. Now, now I can make it a hole that I'm gonna poke into my pumpkin. Now it's kind of a frowny face right now. So I wanna use my rotate again, my rotate right here, and I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees and turn that frown upside down, poke it into my pumpkin, pull it up in space. Make sure that it's poking through. And then I'm gonna group all of my shapes and it should poke a hole right in through my pumpkin. Now, if I wanted to, I could give him some little tiny teeth. So I'm gonna make a little triangle shape. Oops, there we go. I'm gonna move it back in space and see how I keep adjusting my work plane. I rotate my work plane. I'm, you know what, I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna cut a more bigger hole in my pumpkin. I, if I wanted to add teeth, I should have, oh, no, you know what, I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna undo and I'm gonna get my hole back. I'm gonna move it up in space. Oh, except I'm now inside my pumpkin. <laughs> this is so complicated sometimes. This is part of what Tinker, of, of messing with Tinkercad is making sure that what you're making is actually gonna work. So what I'm trying to do is move it up so it's cutting a little bit of a hole out of the top, but not cutting a hole out of the bottom of the mouth. So I'm gonna select both things, I'm gonna group them, and he's gonna have a little tiny tooth sticking up out of his smiley mouth. There we go. Don't know if I like that, May, might change it, but that's okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is the eye shape. You can just use a basic shape for the eyes, but I found this cool tool um, I found on a tutorial that I wanna show, with you, show you. So if you go here to sh on the, your shapes choices and go to shape generators featured, 
it gives you these customizable shapes. You can do round text, you can do all kinds of cool things. I'm gonna grab the extrusion cylinder. And what's cool is it gives you this map of the handles around the outside of the cylinder. So what I can do, if I wanna make like a squinty smiley face eye, I can start to kind of adjust the hole that my eye is gonna be. There we go, that looks pretty cool. All right, so there is the shape of the opening for an eye. Now I wanna put in an eyeball. So I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna go back to my basic shapes and I'm gonna grab a hole, a cylinder and make it a hole. If you hold your shift key when you're resizing, it's gonna keep proportions it's gonna keep all of your sizes and your proportions the same, except for when you grab the wrong thing. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is cut a hole into my eye space for the eyeball. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna group it. I'm gonna, and it'll cut the little eyeball shape out. And so if I was thinking about carving my pumpkin, right, this is the shape that I would carve out. So I'm now going to make this one a hole. And that's going to be one side of my pumpkin's eye, but I need the other side. So I'm going to do Command D and duplicate and move it over to where I want the other one to be. If my pumpkin is looking to the side, this looks pretty good, but I want my pumpkin's eyeballs to be in the middle. So I'm going to go up here to my reflect tool. And it's giving me choices about which way I wanna reflect it. I wanna reflect it horizontally. So when I select that, it just flips it horizontally. So now my eyeballs are in the middle. There we go. I'm gonna grab both eyeballs and the last thing I need to do is rotate them so that they're facing the right way to poke in the pumpkin. So I'm gonna come and look at them at the side and I'm gonna grab the rotate and I'm gonna rotate them 90 degrees and I'm gonna pull them up in space and they look like they might be a little bit big, but let's get them back there and we'll see how they look. Yeah, I think that's a little bit big. So again, I'm gonna hold my shift key. I'm gonna make them just a little bit smaller. Why well, I grabbed the pumpkin instead. Oh man. I'm gonna move them up in space. There we go. Move it up in space just a little bit and pull it out just a little bit. Getting used to moving around in space in Tinkercad is probably the most challenging part. Ah, there we go. Come on, little eyeball. Here we go. There. All right. I'm going to use my arrow keys to nudge it because I'm apparently having some trouble moving it in space. There we go. I'm gonna select everything. I'm gonna group it. And hopefully it'll cut the eyeballs out of the pumpkin. Oh, what a happy looking pumpkin. And I kind of like that his eyes, eyes are off center a little bit. Makes him look like he's squinting and smiling even more. All right, so the last little thing I think we need is a stem for our pumpkin. So I'm gonna come over here and grab the scribble tool. You could just use a cylinder or you could connect a couple cylinders together or maybe use the polygon tool. But I like the scribble tool. So I'm gonna grab a scribble. What this lets me do is draw the shape that I want my pumpkin stem to be. And I want my pumpkin stem to be a little bit wider at the top than at the bottom. 
and have kind of that little bump like the stem was cut off. There we go. So that's what it's going to look like up here. I'm going to click done and it's going to give me that shape. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to make it so it's a little bit narrower. And then I need to rotate it in space. So it's sitting upright. I'm going to pick it up in space and then move it back. So it's on my pumpkin and then maybe I'm going to tip it a little bit. There we go. How's that look? Maybe down just a little bit. You want it to have a good overlap. Don't ever always have an overlap. Don't ever try to have two things really close together and hope that they're touching because the 3D printer can sometimes read that gap and then not print, print them together. So I'm going to group my shapes. So it's all one thing. So the 3D printer knows that it's a solid pumpkin. I'm going to let it think for a minute. And there we go. There is our jack-o-lantern tea candle cover pumpkin. Super festive. It's going to be really cute. And we're good. Oh, the last step, of course, is exporting it so that we can 3D print it. So if you go up here to the menu on the right, you're going to go to export. And you're going to pick an STL file. That is the type of file that our printer likes to use. Please give it a name. Make sure that it has a name that is your last name and what it is so that I know what it is when you turn it into Google Classroom. Hit save. I've already gotten one because I've tested it and it, it'll end up down here. Your file has been downloaded and you can upload that to Google Classroom and then I can send it to print for you. So there we go. There is your pumpkin jack-o-lantern tea candle cover. Well done.